Hi and welcome to Psych You. Just say you had to make a very important decision. Welcome to Love Matchmakers. You're just one choice away from the finale. So choose carefully. Contestant A is a 31-year-old veterinarian from Hawaii who loves dogs and lives with his German shepherd, Stewie. Contestant B is a 29-year-old gourmet chef from California. He loves swimming and eating ice cream sundaes on the beach. Which man will you choose? Well, I do like eating ice cream and I'm allergic to dogs. Actually, I'm kind of terrified of them. Now, don't forget, when we ask the audience about their favorite contestant, 51% of the viewers voted for contestant A. And then you see a graph. It's not a particularly fancy graph. There's a line and some numbers, but one of those bars is clearly higher than the other. Suddenly, one prospect seems a lot more attractive, and there's clearly data to back it up. Before you know it, you've made your choice. Oh, it's so hard to decide. I guess I'll go with the audience. I choose contestant A. Graphs have a bad reputation for being a cheap way of impressing an audience whether or not they contain relevant information. Research published in Public Understanding of Science shows that even a trivial graph, one that just turns the information into numbers, can have a significant effect on the persuasiveness of that information. Now, this can have serious consequences outside of our game show scenario. In one study of medication, participants were presented with a type of medication that claimed to boost immune function and reduce occurrence of the common cold. But in one group, the medication had a graph, and in the other, just text. When asked to rate the medication, the group who had seen the graph perceived the medication to be 23% more effective. In another study, 97% of participants who saw the graph thought that the medication would be effective at reducing the common cold, compared to 68% of participants who hadn't seen the graph. So what's going on here? Well, graphs have what we call a scientific halo. It's the idea that a graph is associated with science and objectivity. So when we see it, we associate the information with being true, even if that graph is pure bullshit. Increasingly, studies have also found that this same scientific halo applies to chemical formulas and also to neurobabble, meaningless references to neuroscience when trying to convince someone of your argument. Studies have shown that this medication leads to improvements in the medulla prefrontal cortex area of the brain. I have no idea what you're talking about, but that sounds amazing. Now here's the scary part, especially for PsyQ viewers. Studies have shown that this scientific halo effect is strongest in people who believe in science and see themselves as scientifically literate. So those who trust in science are also more likely to trust in the tools of science when they see them. So what does all this mean for presenters and consumers of graphs? Well, basically it means we just need to be aware of the power that graphs have. Just because something looks like it's scientifically rigorous doesn't mean that it is. Graphs are just one of the ways that people try and signal scientific credibility to try and sway you in their favor. So beware the superfluous graph. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.